Indicators that correspond with your planned outputs, outcomes, and objectives eventually form the basis for a detailed monitoring and evaluation plan and are an important part of any project planning process. However, indicator design can be as confusing as it is complicated. We're hoping to shed a little light on the process through defining what an indicator is and what a monitoring and evaluation plan is through looking at how indicators work with different project elements in a log frame, and how means of verification relate to indicators, by describing the QQTL rule for indicator design, by revealing the three pitfalls of indicator design, and through sharing a recipe for the objectivity test. So, what is an indicator exactly? According to the Oxford English Dictionary, an indicator is a thing that serves to give an indication or suggestion of something else. For example, car ownership is frequently used as an indicator of affluence. Simply put, Monitoring and evaluation is the systematic collection and analysis of information that allows us to do three things. One, it allows us to prove that we reached the project goals and had the predicted impact on time and on budget. Two, it allows us to improve decision making. And three, it allows for enhanced learning, both internally for organizations and externally by sharing information with different audiences, all of which in turn leads to getting better at meeting the needs of your target group. As the name suggests, there are two major components of the process. The first component, monitoring, which is a continuous process of observing and assessing the progress of your project. The second component, evaluation, or literally determining value. Is your project measuring up to your expectations or to the expectations of your target group? Did you meet your standards efficiently and effectively? And if not, then why not? What could you change for next time? With this in mind, let's back up a bit and revisit the example from the previous video in which we led a thirsty horse to water so the horse could do some drinking. So, if we were going to design indicators for this project, what could they look like? Your indicators could measure changes in quantity or quality or in behavior, but ideally, they'll measure a combination of all three. Indicators are the building blocks of a good monitoring and evaluation system. Think of the information collected for each of your indicators as parts of a cohesive whole. There are indicators that measure whether or not outputs have been achieved, or output level indicators. There are indicators that measure whether anticipated changes in condition have been achieved, or outcome level indicators. And there are indicators that measure whether lasting positive change has happened, or impact level indicators. If all these building blocks are not in place, the information you do collect won't have as much meaning as it should, which could undermine the effectiveness of all of the information. Each indicator needs a corresponding means of verification. The indicator tells you what you're going to measure. 
while the means of verification tells you how you're going to measure it. For example, if your indicator is something like the horse is drinking, your means of verification could be something like documenting how often the horse is seen drinking, or the volume of water being consumed by the horse, or objective, measurable improvements in the horse's health due to hydration, etc. Whatever you plan to use as a means of verification, it needs to be written into your plan so you can make sure to set aside the time and money needed to take the measurement. Indicators need to be accurate and detailed enough to be meaningful, which can be assured if you follow a little rule folks call QQTL. All indicators should describe quality, quantity, time, and location. For example, imagine the indicator farm animals are drinking water. This needs more detail to be meaningful. So let's apply the QQTL rule. Quality. What are the standards for this measurement? Are they drinking only when prompted or independently? Further, what kind of farm animals do you want to see drinking? Quantity. How big is your target group? Time. When do you expect this to happen by? Will the indicator take one measurement at the end of the project or monitor the situation throughout? And location. Where is this going to happen? In one or more locations. Pitfall number one. The information you collect cannot be attributed to the project. There can be many forces at play in any given project context. Some changes occur as a result of your project. But some changes might also occur as a result of some external force over which you have no control. Thirsty? Don't mind if I do. Good indicators can link the change you are measuring directly with the project activity. You look great. Good thing I'm bringing you all this water. But if you can't attribute the change you're measuring directly to the project, hmm then the indicator needs some work. Pitfall number two. The info you're collecting is not reliable. You can ask all kinds of people all kinds of questions, but sometimes the answers for one reason or another are not reliable. For example, if the answer to a question might change depending on who is asking it. Prettiest baby in the world, right? Right. 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 Then the info collected might not be reliable. I'm your favorite baby, right? Right. Right. And if the info is not reliable, then the indicator needs to be reworked. Pitfall number three. Trying to measure an increase with no baseline. If your progress indicators rely on things like increases or decreases or improvements, etc., you need to know what the starting point or baseline is. For example, if there was an indicator for the horse to increase its water intake, you need to know what the measurement is at the beginning of the project in order to measure the increase. This is a baseline, and if you can't take a baseline measurement, you need to change the indicator. Good indicators are objectively verifiable. This means that anyone should be able to take the same measurement and get the same result. When designing indicators, keep in mind that sometimes it's hard to be objective. For example, you may be so familiar with the group that you're working with that you can see meaning in subtle changes that other people simply don't recognize. This horse is way happier than yesterday. How can you tell? I know him so well. Trust me, I can tell. And if other people can't observe and measure the information, then the info you collect is not going to be very convincing. So when you're designing your indicators, ask yourself, could anyone take this measurement and get the same result as me? If not, the indicator needs some more work. 
And that's it. So to review, indicators are the building blocks of a strong monitoring and evaluation plan. They need to include specifics like quality, quantity, time, and location. You want to make sure that the info you collect is reliable, that you can attribute the changes you measure to the project, and that the indicators and means of verification are objective, that anyone can take the measurements and get the same result. Thank you.